Hi everyone. Ever since the recent pandemic of COVID-19, we have become over suspicious of what can come again. And one of the recent development being monkeypox. What is monkeypox? How does it spread? What are the basis indications of the testing modalities? And how can we actually get cure out of it? We'll discuss everything in this video. Let's start. But ensure you watch the complete video and don't forget to subscribe it. What exactly is monkeypox? First of all, let's understand the basic virus. What is it? Monkeypox belongs to a viral zoonotic disease. And you know, even though it is called as monkeypox, it's not exactly and always found in monkey. It was called as monkeypox because first discovery was done in the monkeys, but it was then shown to have actually been found in some rodents. Yes, that's an interesting fact. The first clinical case of mon monkeypox was discovered in 1958, so quite long ago. And the first human case of monkeypox was actually discovered in 1970 from the Czech Republic of Congo, that means Africa. And basically this monkeypox was a disease located to Africa only. But when it starts spreading out of Africa, then is when we all actually got concerned. Monkeypox, this virus, you know, this virus belongs to a family of a species that's called this orthomyxovirus. Okay, this orthomyxovirus family, it's a double standard DNA virus. Remember, it's very important to know it's a double standard DNA virus and belongs to this family of virus called as orthopox virus. Not only this monkey virus one of the family, but it also includes some other viruses and that mainly includes the virus like variola, the cowpox and the vaccinia virus, which already we all know about it. Yes, it belongs to the category of a virus which is called a smallpox virus, which was quite er eradicated quite long back. And suddenly this has again come back. The structure being a brick-shaped structure in the electron microscopy. And the brick shapes shows lateral body. There's an outer membrane. There's a lateral body. The surface protein. Look at surface protein. And these are the, all the core protein which actually contain the nucleocapsid. Remember, it's a double standard DNA virus. And I have put this other virus just to compare this. The small one is a polio virus. SARS CoV, we all know how what have I actually created with the S spike protein and the nucleocapsid. And then comes the HIV. And look how large this monkey virus actually is. A four cases of monkeypox has been reported in India till now three from Kerala and one from a 34 year old man in Delhi. And this was reported just three days back. So what is the impact of this monkey pox? Monkey pox. Let's see that. See, now actually this monkey pox in the natural reservoir is unknown. And even though rodents, as I told you, even though we caught monkey pox, but the rodents have been believed to be the main reservoir of such monkey pox. Okay. The incubation period is six to thirteen days, but can range from a long of seven, sorry, five days to twenty-one days. That means only one to three weeks can be a long incubation period. So that becomes of important challenge when a person is coming from the outside country that's Europe where the monkeypox has actually become a bit more concerned and those uh, people travelers actually come to India how long to actually incubate them that's a big challenge for us the period of infectivity is one to two days before the rash to until the scab actually falls so what exactly are the lesions of monkeypox we should know this the mode of transmission of monkeypox is a large droplet just like a COVID it also spreads by the body fluids the material indirect contacts with the lesion material and animal to human transmission and along with that bite or scratch of infected animals as you see that many uh, students do ask me sir what is a comparison of a SARS-CoV-2 versus a monkey box yes mode of transmission is completely same and if you see the mode of incubation period is almost or less the same in both the monkey box as well as SARS-CoV-2 so how do you define a case of monkey box the typical lesions as you see in this image is how a monkeypox can be. Now, basically, a suspected case of monkeypox would be any person of any age traveling with a history to those countries where the monkeypox cases have been seen to India within the last 21 days. And I hope you got the point because the incubation period is a long incubation period of 21 days. So we have to take all into that account or an unexplained rash. And one of the following symptoms, which include a swollen lymph nodes, it could be fever, it can be body aches, it can also be profound weakness. They are just prodromal symptoms, which can also be there. So a history of travel with a rash and any of these symptoms can be a suspected case of monkeypox. Okay, so what are the common symptoms? The prodromal symptoms, as I told you, it's like a fever, a lymph nodinopathy, it can be headache, it can be chills, rigors, and can also be a sore throat or cough. So basic symptoms or prodromal symptoms which last for around 0 to 5 days only. And then comes the 
differential diagnosis. So based on these findings, what do you think in a patient? You think about the common cold and yes, it could be common cold, it could be chicken pox, it could be herpes zoster, it could be herpes simplex, measles and all those symptoms of viral exanthem which can lead to a rash like state in a patient. So, a traveler who is coming from an endemic country to our country, so what can you think about? As I told you, 21 days is the time when you have to keep them in an isolation time. So, that's a long time. So, in a symptomatic phase, it could be rash phase or could be recovery phase. In the rash phase, in the rash phase, the specimen, it should be taken from the rash only. Okay? So, in the recovery phase, you can take the blood, but in the rash phase, you have to take the specimen from that rash only. And that rash could be a lesion, uh, lesion roof it could be a can be taken from the scalper or a plastic uh, strapper it could be taken from the lesion fluid it could be taken from the base of the lesions or can be taken from the trust of the lesions okay similarly the blood can also be collected in the spleen tube or can be taken in EDTA tube and urine can be taken in a case of urine container these all samples along with this lesion samples you have to take also the blood and urine in the rash phase of these patients okay so uh, for a confirmed case of monkey virus, how should you actually move forward? First of all, you put a PCR for an ortho pox virus. As I told you, it includes a, uh, other cow pox vaccinia also. So if that is positive, if the above sample shows positive, and then you have to put the confirmation for a monkey pox DNA as well. Finally, you can confirm this by the gene sequencing, which is the next gen sequencing or the mini sequencing can be done. So initially, we put a DNA of a ortho uh, pox virus if that is positive we then go for the pcr for the monkey pox specially and if that is positive then you can confirm this by the sequencing analysis but now as uh, the case are very very less it is done only by the niv that is the national institute of virology pune only so how do you proceed on further there's a pcr for the ortho pox virus is taken if positive then a pcr for a monkey pox can be taken and if again is positive you have to report this as positive however if this ortho pox virus is negative then you have to in investigate for some other causes of the monkey pox okay principles of management are more or less same as for the monkey pox as well as the uh, the virus which was actually um, the covid 19 there's not a lot of difference you have to give the patient isolation you have to protect the compromised skin and mucous membrane you have to actually cover that uh, especially rehydration therapy is very important and good nutrition as is for any other symptom also uh, symptom uh, elevation like in the fever you have to give paracetamol nothing else should be given as was for any viral illness and the monitoring and treatment of complication is to be done for these patients so the basic idea of uh, these patients is to first of all isolate them a suspect should be isolated for around 21 days and just to look for the symptomatic treatment just like a covid infection as we all have done uh, if there is a suspected lesion, then you have to cover that lesion. That's very, very important. The lesions should be covered to the best extent possible. Uh, long sleeves and long pants should be done to minimize the contact with other uh, patients. And the isolation should be continued until the scabs have completely fallen off. This is very, very important for us to know about this infection. Okay. Now, basic management, you all understand. If it's just a rash, you have to give a simple antiseptic or a mupirocin antibiotic can be given just to prevent the additional infections. As you all know, that flu um, condemns and the bacteria then supervenes. That's a very common saying in uh, medical science. So, light dressing can be done, but do not touch the scratch lesions also. If a patient has gentle ulcers, a seized path can be given. Oral ulcers, then the warm uh, sand gargles can be also done and conjunctivitis uh, a patient should be given just uh, um, drops of antibiotics can also be given to them now, now if a patient requires the hydration then rehydration therapy is to be given along with ors iv fluids and nutrition support should also be given if a patient is suffering from fever you have to give paracetamol only if required and itching brighter scalia you have to give the topical uh, anticalamine sorry the antihistamines and the calamine lotions can be also added to them anti uh, emetics obviously the patient is nauseated and is having vomiting and headache will again require hydration and uh, paracetamol use as just was for the covid infection okay the contact tracing again becomes important as i told you it is has to be understood that where the patient has actually come from because nowadays the those travelers are traveling from european countries because europe is the area from where the monkey pox cases have been reported and so those uh, people if they have some symptoms they have to be adequately contained and prevent the infection to just uh, move forward 
uh, product ourselves, we have to use the PP. You all know high hygiene PP. We have done this a lot over the days, and the biomedical waste guidelines should be properly followed just to prevent the case of monkeypox. Now, coming back to sir, how important is to understand ki how important is to understand actually that a case of COVID and a monkeypox. How do you compare these, sir? Basically, the monkeypox is a I'll say milder form of smallpox, first of all. Secondly, when a COVID infection came, we were quite worried because it was a new infection. Monkeypox, as such, this case has been reported multiple times, and we have adequate vaccination also for this available. So that's a good thing. In comparison to COVID, which has uh, a lot of mutations, it requires respiratory tract mainly. Uh, monkeypox mainly is a skin uh, rash along with a superficial upper respiratory tract infection. So that becomes a milder form of, um, you know, just a flu. So comparing these two, we should not be a lot worried about this monkeypox in terms of how uh, spread it can be. Because the good thing is we have a vaccine already available for it. And, uh, you know, who knows what is the basic reason behind it. And I'm not going to that. But the idea is, since the infection is milder form of a flu, it is uh, prevented by the given a vaccination. Vaccination is quite available for this. I don't think there's a lot of thing to be worried, worried about monkeypox. But yes, uh, we all should continue using our masks as we have been doing over the days. And uh, that is, has become a you know new way of life. Let's try to embrace it and move forward with our new ways of life. I hope that you like the video. If you do have any questions, put in the comment box below. I'll try to solve it for there also. But uh, stay safe, stay happy. And more importantly, just take care of your family also. Goodbye. God bless you all.